Hi, in this video, I'll show you how to perform survival analysis in SAS. Make sure that you have gone through my video on survival analysis theory in this channel before going through this video. I have covered the theoretical part of survival analysis in, in that video. It is always good to know the theory before knowing the application, hence go through that video first. In this video, we will <clears throat> we will uh, study three things: how to use PROC life test in SAS to do uh, the Kaplan-Meier estimation. Just to remind you, Kaplan-Meier estimation is one uh, estimation method that is used to estimate the uh, survival function. Then we will learn how to uh, interpret the product limit uh, table, uh, which comes as part of the result in the uh, estimation process and then finally we will learn how to interpret the survival curve for this illustration i have taken a medical data set <coughs> there are 500 patients who have gone through uh, gone through uh, medication um, medication and uh, the medical uh, authority wants to know that uh, how many of them are surviving uh, beyond a certain period okay look at the data set that you can see on the screen uh, id is the uh, customer id or oh, sorry uh, the uh, patient id uh, i have got uh, one one to 500 so there are 500 patients in total length of follow means uh, <clears throat> till what time uh, they were in the study the, the patient was in the study uh, then F start. F start is the status of the patient. Zero is surviving. One is, uh, you know, the person died. So uh, the event of interest is dying or death. Uh, as you know, survival analysis is uh, a kind of modeling where we model the uh, time to event. So uh, if you see, look at the uh, patient four. Uh, the status is 1 that means the patient has died at what time at 297 7th day from the uh, date of medication okay so uh, what is the sensor variable in this case the sensor variable is the F stat uh, you will see so many cases where the patient is surviving and uh, uh, or or the patient has dropped uh, dropped out from the um, study okay uh, and these cases are censored cases f stat is the variable that shows whether patient is dying or it's surviving or it's drop, dropping out okay let's close the data set uh, it is always good to uh, do the frequency table uh, to know the distribution of the events and non-events and uh, the minimum maximum of, of, of the time period, um, the length of the time period that is followed. So I assume that you would do it before doing the analysis. You have to use the PROC means PROC frequency to do the uh, exploratory, exploratory data analysis before doing the modeling work. I will straight away go to the modeling proc life test data medical uh, I'm going to I'm going to write here at risk so this is an option uh, which gives you how many people or how many patients are at risk at different time point and then I'll plot the survival function then time length follow f start 0 let us understand uh, the syntax proc life test is the proc that is used for uh, for estimation estimating the kaplan-meier function at risk is something that is used to know what is uh, the count of uh, patient 
uh, um, at risk at different uh, time uh, time points and then we use the plots for plotting the survival function in time uh, we we need to mention that uh, what is the time period of following the particular event uh, length follow or l e n f o l that particular variable is our time uh, or the duration for which the patient is uh, under study and then f start f start is nothing but the censored variable uh, and what is the value that shows censoring well it's zero if it is one then the event has happened what is the event in this case it's death if f start is one then the patient has died within the uh, study period if it is the, if the status is zero it hasn't died or it's it's a sensor case we have no clue what is happening with that patient uh, after the uh, study period and then run let us run this Um, you can see on the screen uh, uh, the product limit survival estimate. Let us understand this first. Uh, number of people at risk, number of patients at risk, 500. In the zeroth time, uh, everyone has, is, is at risk. Nobody has died. Okay. Um, then, in the first uh, day, on the first day, uh, one person died, and then second person died, and gradually. 8% uh, in total died on the first day. Not 8, it's uh, yeah, it's 8. 8% died. So on the second day, before the second day, 8 people have died in the first day itself. So total number of people who are at risk in the second day is 492 now. The survival probability is 1 in time 0. That means the probability that individual will survive beyond time 0 is 1. Everybody is going to survive. But after time 1, when 8 people have died, the uh, survival probability decreases. Obviously, because people are dying now uh, and then the probability of surviving beyond time 1 reduces. And it is reduced to 0 0.98. And then there is a corresponding failure also. Failure means your death. Survival, uh, it's the complementary. It's just 1 minus 0.984 is your 0 0.016. So uh, your failure rate is like 1 minus your success rate or your survival rate. Okay. In the time period 2, again 8 people are dying. So for the time period 3, your survival probability decreases to 0.96. And so on. It will go on decreasing, decreasing, and then uh, the number of people at risk is is going to go down with time. Uh, and there will be a point. This will go on till uh, the number of uh, time points we have. We are having in total 2,358 time points. Um, till till that time point, we will be observing what is happening to this. Uh, patients and how many people are, are at risk and what is the survival uh, probability and uh, so on. <coughs> the survival pro probability as you know it's unconditional probability that means it's not conditioned on the fact that how many people have died uh, previous to that so it's completely independent of that. Um, all you know that what is the probability of survival beyond a particular time t that t will varies from 1 to your uh, your end end of the period you have more than 2000 so from 1 to 2300 uh, time point uh, when you plot this uh, survival probability at each point each time point you get a survival curve you can see on the screen in the x-axis is the survival distribution function which takes uh, value from 0 to 1. Uh, it's, it's nothing but the probability. Um, at time 0, everybody is surviving. So the probability of survival is 100% or is 1. Okay. But at time goes, uh, the survival uh, value or the probability uh, goes down gradually. 
and uh, by the time it's uh, the 500 uh, 500th day of the uh, study you can see 25% uh, of the population have already died only 75% are remaining or uh, in other words how do we interpret this well beyond the 500th uh, beyond 500th day the probability that a patient is going to survive is 0.75 similarly uh, at uh, 1000th day you can see on my marker 1000th day uh, the probability is somewhere around 0.65 um, so the probability that a patient is going to survive beyond 1000th day is 0.65 uh, similarly, uh, it's 0.5 on the 2000th day. Okay, that's how we interpret the survival uh, uh, survival curve. Uh, why is it so interesting to us? Because we get to know that uh, how the events is happening, at what rate it is happening. We can compare different survival curves across different, uh, uh, you know. Um, uh, different uh, you know categories for example we can do it for male and then do it for female and then compare how do we compare we compare in such a way that what is the mortality rate and how do we uh, see a difference between male and female population so these are the cases where we use the survival function and um, <clears throat> one of the peculiarity of the survival model you might have already uh, have this question in mind that what is your dependent variable what is your independent variable usually we always want a dependent and independent variable in the model but we don't have it here so what is the uh, reason and uh, what kind of a model is this well this is kind of an univariate analysis where we just need one variable for us we just need uh, in fact it um, the only thing that we need is the status of the uh, patient and the length uh, length of the time uh, followed uh, so there are two variables um, and then we just plot it by taking the unconditional probability that is all we are doing it here and Kaplan estimation is is the one that we are using it here uh, very simple but very powerful analysis the same thing can be replicated in other fields also uh, uh, we, we are analyzing death here we can analyze anything, any event in the credit risk industry. We can analyze default, we can analyze delinquency, we can analyze uh, bankruptcy, uh, payoff, liquidation, so many things. Similarly, in the uh, in the marketing industry, we can uh, analyze when is the customer buy purchasing. So purchase is the uh, event. When is the customer leaving the uh, company or uh, uh, you know being loyal to company? So these events can also be plotted as a survival curve and we'll get to know at a portfolio level that what is the percentage of uh, customers who are uh, surviving beyond a particular time point. Okay, so that gives a fairly good uh, idea about how the, you know, the business events happens across the time period and it really uh, is helpful taking uh, in very important decisions. That's uh, pretty much about the Kaplan-Meier estimation. We can of course go on to the uh, more complex estimation uh, method uh, and then a uh, couple of things we can do. We can uh, compare survival analysis plots across different categories and check it out. Uh, that uh, we will see in a separate session. For this session, uh, that is all we will learn. Thank you.